Hello photo friends. Today we are talking about the Nikon F3 and take some photos on the Taubenstein mountain in Bavaria. The Nikon F3 is one of my favorite cameras. Since I got it I took it on almost every photo trip. The F3 is a professional manual focusing SLR camera for 35mm film and was built from 1980 till 2002. On the front left there is a connection for flashes, the lens release button and also a lever so you can use your old non-AI lenses. On the front right is a exposure memory lock button and a lever for a mechanical release with a 60th of a second when your battery is empty. Over it is a depth of field button. When it is pressed and the lever on the button is switched, the mirror will rise up. The LED next to it blinks when the self timer is activated. On top we have the self timer and the on off switch. The lever on the right is for multiple exposures. When switched out and you use the film advance lever, the film will not wind forward for this exposure. On top of the film advance lever is the shutter release button and next to it is also the frame counter. The shutter speed dial goes from 8 seconds till 2000th of a second. For long exposures you can either use the bulb mode or the T mode. In bulb mode the exposure is as long as you press down the shutter button. When using the T mode you press the shutter or the manual shutter lever and it will expose till you turn the shutter speed dial in one direction. The T mode can be used without battery power using the manual shutter. The X mode is for flash synchronization using 1 80th of a second. To exit this mode as well as the aperture mode you have to press down a little button. In A mode, the aperture mode, you set your aperture and the camera will automatically choose the exposure time for you. On the left we have the film rewind crank which opens the camera back when a little lever is pressed and you pull up the crank. If you want to use exposure compensation you have to pull down a little button to turn the wheel. To change the ISO you have to pull up the film speed scale and turn it. One of the best things about the F3 are the interchangeable viewfinders. To change the viewfinder you have to press two buttons at the same time and then lift the viewfinder. To use a waist level finder is sometimes a real game changer. There are also a lot of focusing screens which can be changed easily. The shutter time with over and under exposure icons are shown in a small LCD screen. When you are not in aperture mode it will also show a small M letter. Next to it you will see the current aperture. Both informations can be seen with all the different viewfinders. You can also light up the display when pressing a little button on front. There is a little knob for a eyepiece shutter which prevents from entering light when doing long time exposures. At the bottom is the film rewind button, some connections for external motor drives, a tripod socket and the battery chamber lid. I suggest using CR13N batteries, they are more reliable in cold areas. For loading film Open the camera back, pull the end of the film into one of the slots of the take-up spool, then insert the film cartridge in the chamber and push the rewind knob back in place. Wind the film advance lever once, so the film is tightened. Close the camera and wind the film forward till the one is in the frame counter. Then tighten the film by rewinding it till you feel a resistance. If your rewind knob rotates when you advance your film, the camera is perfectly loaded. When your film is full, push the film rewind button on the bottom and rotate the film rewind knob till the film is completely wound up. 
there is one thing I absolutely don't like about the F3, but I will tell you at the end of the video. Now let's shoot some photos on the Taubenstein. That's it for our little trip to the Taubenstein with the Nikon F3. And with about 700 grams without lens, the camera is alright for hiking. So, what's not so good is the light leakage at the bayonet during long exposures in daylight. It forces me to attach an extra cloth covering, which isn't a deal breaker, but you have to remember to do it. If you don't, you'll maybe get some weird lightnings in your picture. I've already had the Nikon serviced it once with a new bayonet, but the problem persisted. So it seems like a common issue. It's also worth mentioning that the camera doesn't have a hot shoe. You have to attach it separately with an adapter. Despite these problems, for me the F3 is one of the best cameras overall in terms of features, versatility and usability. Thanks for watching and see you next time.